Hi, Ozai is here. I'm known throughout the industry as OZ. What I'd like to do today is share this info guide in the world of hydronics with you. This info guide will help you better understand some of the standards, principles, and procedures that are used in the world of hydronics. This guide consists of two parts. Part one contains some terms, procedures, and standards that are used throughout the industry. Part two is an actual work in progress demonstrating how to size the hydronic heating system from heat loss to boiler size. The purpose of this demonstration is to provide you with a framework for understanding how these estimates are calculated. Remember, this information should be taken as a guide only and is used for illustrative purposes. Step one in design of a home's heating system is to determine the house's actual heat loss. In order to get optimum energy efficient and home comfort, you must do a room by room heat loss estimate to determine the heat loss requirements of each room. A room by room method also determines the amount of air that is required to heat each individual room. Since most rooms differ from one another, each room heat loss must be determined. A room loses heat through walls, doors, floors, ceiling, windows, and the roof. These areas are heated on the inside and exposed on the other side. Heat distribution units is installed for the purpose of replacing the heat losses of each room. It is important to know the amount of heat that each unit will provide. Not only is this necessary to determine the correct size of the heat distribution units, it is also required to size the distribution piping, circulator selection, and boiler size for the system. The terms that are commonly used in estimating heat losses are infiltration and conductive heat transmission. Infiltration. Infiltration and conductive heat are two primary methods of heat losses in buildings. Infiltration is heat loss due to heat air leakage from inside of the room or any uncontrolled air escaping through cracks in the building's envelope and being replaced by the cold air coming in to replace it. The building's envelope is a continuous insulated barrier between the inside and the outside, consisting of walls, floors, doors, windows, and the roof. You can't stop the flow of heat, which always moves in one direction, from something with more heat gain to something with less heat loss. The greater the temperature differences, the greater the quantity of heat that would flow. To estimate how fast heat flows through a building, construct an assembly of envelope, you need to know the building's construction U factor and the infiltration factor. Let's look at some review notes. Cubic feet, volume of air and BTUs equals lift times the width times the height times design, temperature difference times the infiltration factor. BT, BTUH is the total heating loss and BTUs for the room of house. Design temperature difference is a DDT. The indoor temperature minus the outdoor temperature is equal to DDT. The indoor design temperature of the heating system is usually assumed to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the outdoor temperature is usually assumed to be zero degrees. Outdoor design temperature is usually defined as a temperature that is equaled or exceeded 97.5% of the time during the three coldest months of the year. According to the International Code Council, outdoor design temperatures are used in the, to look in the load calculations to determine the minimum heating facilities for residential structures. Conductive heat transmission. Heat flows through solid materials such as surface areas, windows to walls, doors, floors, or ceilings. Window loss is the largest single heat loss element. U factor is defined as the number of BTUs that flows through one square foot of material in, in an hour for every degree Fahrenheit difference in temperature across the materials. The lower the U factor, the lower the rate of heat loss. Each penetration has its own U factor. R values and U values. Factors only slow the flow of heat. The U factor is the inverse of the R value. The R value of insulated material means the resistance of flow or passage of heat. Review notes. Heat is transmitted through all surfaces that will be warm on the inside and cold on the outside. Examples, U equals one divided by R and R equals one divided by U. R19, U factor equals one divided by 19 gives you a U factor of 0.05. Total BTU is equals length times the width times the DDT times the U factor. <coughs> Infiltration heat loss plus conductive heat loss equal to total heat loss for the room or the or house. Step two is to estimate the total amount of BTUs that are needed to replace the amount of heat loss in each room. The infiltration factor and the conductive heat transmission U factors are used for this procedure. 
Next, you have to determine the maximum length of BTUs per hour per liter for the baseboard fin tube that is needed to overcome the heat loss for the rooms. This information can be found in the manufacturer's fin tube rating tables for design temperatures of residential copper fin tube baseboards. See an example of the radi radius chart for residential baseboard and BTU carrying capacitive copper pipe on page 6. The industry standard for radiant heat output for residential copper to baseboard is 600 BTUs per hour when the average water temperature is 180 degrees Fahrenheit rating for that particular heating element. For example, let's say the room requires a heat load of 30,000 BTUs. You divide 30,000 by 600 equals 50 linear feet of baseboard is needed for the room. Location of heating elements under windows along outside walls between windows. Infiltration heat loss, BTU equals L times the W times the H times DDT times the infiltration, infiltration factor. Conductive heat loss, BTU equals L times W times DDT times the U factor. DDT design temperature difference between the indoor temperature and the outdoor design temperature. Indoor temperature minus outdoor temperature equals design temperature difference. Total heat loss equals infiltration plus conductive. Thermal heat values, energy content of fuel expressed in BTU. A BTU's amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of liquid water by one degree. Fahrenheit at its maximum density, which occurs at a temperature of 39.1 degrees Fahrenheit, one BTU is approximately equal to the energy released by burning a match. Here's one of the rating charts I was telling you about. There are many of them. The manufacturers have all different types. When you go and you order them, they have this in there. And you can see the maximum feet of baseboard. They give you the half inch, 15,000 BTU, maximum 25 feet. And you see at the bottom it says uh, the note, the baseboard length shown are based on 600 BTUs per hour with a three quarter inch element approximately 185 degrees delta T. Step three is determine the flow rate G, GPMs and pressure drop head loss requirements for the system piping in the circulator. This information is obtained by measuring the longest loop of the piping. It starts from the supply side of the border through the heating elements and back to the re return side of the boiler. The universal hydraulic formula, GPMs equals BTUs divided by 500 times delta T is used in the world of hydraulics to calculate some of the following. Flow rates and GPMs. Head loss, pressure drop. Distribution system piping sizing. Circulator selection. Boiler size and size of supply pipe out of boiler. The circulator represents the relationship between the flow rate and head loss for a given piping system or zone. Most manufacturers of circulators provide a pump performance curve graph. On the graph, you can pinpoint the type of circulator that matches the head and flow requirements for the piping system. See example of a pump performance curve graph on page nine. An example of the industry standard pipe sizes and flow rates at 20 degrees delta T on page 20. Use the longest loop, loop method to calculate head loss for copper or steel pipe. It starts at the discharge side of the boiler, goes through the heating piping, and back to the suction side of the boiler. To allow for addition, additional pressure drop through fittings, valves, etc., we multiply the longest loop in feet by 1.5. This gives us the total equivalent of feet. Next, we multiply that number by 0.4. This represents feet of head loss per 100 foot of straight pipe, property size pipe, based on the min-max flow velocity. TEL is a total equivalent length. We we'll use a short cuff method. You can take that times 0.06. A circulator doesn't have to lift water. It only has to overcome the friction loss or head loss of the system. Flow and pressure drop are required to properly size the system pipe and the circulator. In a, in a three zone system, if the circulator has enough head to circulate the water through the longest head zone, it can also hound the head loss of the two shorter zones. Sizing the distribution piping and selection of the circulator. When the, when the GPM flow rates and pressure drop head loss is established, the pipe size and circulator selection can be determined. To determine the pump head loss, make a piping layout and measure the total longest loop of the piping and the baseboard heating elements from the base boiler supply outlet along the pipe and back to the return side of the boiler. Example, the longest loop is 90 feet. 
90 feet times 1.5 equals 135 feet times 0.4 give us 5.4 feet of head loss. Let's say we have a total heating load of 100,000 BTUs for the house. To determine the flow rate, we use GPM equals BTUs divided by 500 uh, times delta T. Example, 100,000 divided by 10 equals a 10, 10 gallon per minute flow rate. Use the pump performance curve graph. You're looking for a circulator that can circulate 10 gallons per minute at a feed head of 5.4 feet. Most residential circulators are limited to 8 to 10 feet head with flow rates of less than 20 GPMs. Here's a pump, pump a performance uh, curve. And like I was showing you, you had a flow rate of 9 GPMs and you had a head of 5.4. So yet that circulator number one could probably could do your system. His examples of industry guidelines for flow rate should be about one gallon per minute for each 10,000 BTU at a 20 degree delta T. And you see the pipe size, and they give you the flow rates, and they give you the, at 20 degrees delta T. There are different delta T's, but this is based on a 20 degree delta T. Step four is selection of boilers, capacity, and efficiency. This information we found in the boilers manufacturer brochure catalog. The boiler's efficiency is measured by the annual fuel efficiency, AFEU, and AFEU of 90 means that 90% of the fuel becomes heat for the home and the other 10% escapes up the chimney or through the building's envelope. In the boiler's manufacturer's catalog, you'll find several types of ratings that are listed for each boiler and their model numbers. In the first column, there's the input rating that BTUs is the amount of, of the heat that the fire is put into the boiler. The second column lists the gross output in BTUs or Department of Energy Heating's capacity. This is what left over after heat goes up the chimney. The third column lists the net AR, AHR water ratings. The water ratings are based on the net installed radiation of sufficient quality for the requirements of the building and nothing needs to be added for normal piping and pickup. The fourth column lists the AFU percentage. AFUE is the measure of how efficiency of water converts gas into heat energy. See an example of a manufacturer's brochure on page 13. AFUE percent equals heating capacity divided by the input or BTU input times AFUC percentage equals official heating capacity. A typical residential boiler is any boiler with an input less than 300,000 BTUs. A typical residential boiler is designed to have a 30 PS safety relief valve and a tridicator gauge which shows the water and temperature pressure. Most hydraulic heating systems are designed at 20 degree to delta T. This means that water leaves the boiler at 180 and returns at 160. The minimum AFU EU rating for gas fired water boilers is 82%. Uh, MBH, 1,000 BTUs per hour is the expression of the rate of energy consumption or production. M is for 1,000 Bs for BTUs, the British thermal unit, and H is for, per hour, that is, 100,000 BTUs per hour equals 100 MBH. Note, earning the energy star means, uh, earning the energy star means products meet strict energy uh, efficiency guidelines set by the U.S. Uh, Protection Agency, EPA. According to EPA, energy star certified boilers can be up to 12% more efficient than a standard boiler. Energy star certified boilers have an annual utilized Lacing rating of 87% or greater for oil boilers or 90% or greater for gas boilers. They achieve greater efficiency with features including uh, electronic ignition, which eliminates the need to have a poly light burn all the time, uh, new combustion technologies that extract more heat from the same amount of fuel, uh, sealed combustion that uses outside air to fuel the burner, reducing drafts and improving safety. Review notes to property size and new replacement board, you should do a room by room heat loss estimate. For the manufacturer catalogs, like a boiler having a DEO rating and, and BTUs equal to or greater than the total estimated heat loss of the building. Department of Energy, heating capacity is a good start, is a good start in boiler selection. According to the DEO, measuring the heating system efficiency, the efficiency of the combustion heating appliance. Furnace and boilers is measured by the annual fuel utilization efficiency. AFEU equals how efficient appliances convert the energy to its fuel to heat divided by the annual 
fossil fuel energy consumed by the plants. DEO, uh, hydronic efficiency ratings, OLO, efficient heating system 56 to 70 percent, medium efficient heating systems 80 to 83 percent, high efficiency heating systems 90 98.5 percent. Finally I would tie it all together showing a pipe drawing of all the pipe sizes and flow rates for the three zones. The largest loop in this system is 150 feet. It starts at the boiler, goes through two sections of baseboards, and then go back to the boiler. If the pump has enough head to circulate the water through the longest loop with two baseboards, you can also handle the shorter two loops of baseboards. This drawing is dramatically simplified for discussion purposes. An example of the longest loop method is shown on page 20. Here's one of the manufacturer's ratings. We talk about the, um, on the boilers. And one of the things I can look at this and look at this right off the bat, I can tell that this, these boilers are all designed for a 20 degree, 20 degree belt, a delta T. And how you, how you determine that, you find the flow rate. The flow rate is based on the capacity, and you divide that with the, with the universal formula. And you take the 44,000 divided by 10,000 to give you 4.4 GPMs. And you go to your chart and you find 4.4 GPMs give you pipe size of three quarter inch. Another thing you look on here, you see there, you know, the supply and return piping, and that's calculated with the flow rate also. So this information is a, you usually get that in all the manufacturers' brochures, and sometimes you get the additional information on how they want you to pipe the system. Part two, using the instructions and the review notes, we can now estimate the size of the boiler, baseboard, heating elements, distribution piping, circulation selection, and piping to and from the boiler, supply and return. This example will demonstrate how to manually do a heat loss estimate by using a simple spreadsheet method and size the pipe distribution system using a uniform, universal hydraulic formula, GPM is equal to BTUs divided by 500 times delta T. Estimating heat loss, our house will be designed for indoor temperature 70 degrees and outdoor temperature zero degrees. The heat distribution units will be a hot water copper fin tube baseboard. Okay, let's, let us do one. Keeping it simple for this example, let's, let's consider a simple residential uh, house that has a rectangle room, 10 feet by 10 feet by 8 feet, 8 foot ceiling. The room has two outside walls with windows. The room also has two 4 by 3 windows on one wall and one 5 by 4 window on the other wall. This information for this procedure can be found in the IBR AHIR Guide 22. For our example, we'll use the IBH AHIR infiltration factor. 0.018 for rooms with two outside walls. Note, according to the National Code Council, heating and cooling equipment should be sized based on building loads calculated in cores with the ACCA Manual J. We can get our estimates by using the simple spreadsheet method for each room. Over the years, many companies have developed computer software programs that do a much better job than paper and pencil, but it's still only an estimate. These programs are more accurate only if the data you enter is correct. Are you ready? Take out your calculator, paper, and pencil. It's time to run the numbers. To find the infiltration heat loss, we will have to find the volume of the air in the room. Multiply length times the width times the height. This tells us how many cubic feet of air we're dealing with. Next, multiply that, that number times the design temperature di difference, and then multiply that number by the inf infiltration factor. L times the width times the height times the DDT times the infiltration factor equals infiltration heat loss and you see the numbers 10 by 10 by 8 by 7 times 0.18 equals a total 1008 BT loss for the room. Conductive heat loss is heat loss through walls, ceilings, floors, windows, doors, etc. The formula to use for this procedure is length times the width times the design temperature difference times the U factor. For the windows we're using low E, e, e argon filled double glaze with a U factor 0.35. To find the window heat loss, we total up the square footage of all the windows and count them as one big window. It makes it easy to do the math. In this case, the room has 44 square feet of window. We multiply 44 times design temperature difference of 70 and then multiply again by the factor 0.35, the U factor. And you get the numbers 44 times 70 times 0.3 equals 1,078 uh, BTU loss for the windows. The walls are next. We want to use the net area of the walls and then multiply that number by the design temp 
temperature difference in the UFAC the wall assumption. We have two outside walls. Both walls are 10 feet long. To make it easier, we add the lens together and make it one big wall. In this case, we have 20 liter feet of wall times eight feet high for a total area of 160 square feet of wall area. Subtract the one area from the total 160 square feet minus 44 square feet of wall area. We have 116 square feet is the number we will use for the net wall area. Next, we should find the U factor for the walls. Process, convert the R value to U factor. In this example, we have insulated walls with two by six studs with R6, R19 bat insulation. In this case, we divide one by 19 to find a wall factor of 0.05 U factor. And we do the math 116 times 70 times 0.05 equals 406 PT lost through the walls. Outside doors, if there were any, would be calculated in the same way, and the air would also be deducted from the net wall area. Floors and ceilings, we would only need to calculate them if they were unheated, spaced above or below them. If the air below the room was heated, there would be no heat loss through the floor or through the ceiling if the space was heated above the room. For the ceiling, we would multiply the length times the width times the design temperature dip difference times the U factor. Ceilings, uh, R times, ceilings R38 insulation of the U factor, 0.02 U factor, 10 times 10 times 70 times two, total 140 BT dollars for the ceiling. Floors R19 insulation, 0.5 U factor, and the math 10 times 10 times 70 times 0.05 equals 350 BT loss for the floor. See an example of a simple spreadsheet method on page 18. Uh, here's an example of a simple spreadsheet uh, model you see where we, we calculate the DDT indoor design temperature to the outdoor minus the outdoor di design temperature. And we come up with a 70. So that's why the first one was our infiltration. We had the bedroom number one. We had the exposed walls. We did the math. We had the heat loss of 108. We did the uh, windows for the conductive heat loss transmission. We did the windows. We had 1078. We did the walls. We had 406. Ceilings, we had 140. Floors, we had 350, we have a total heat loss for that room is 2,982 uh, BTUs. And down at the bottom, you see why I took the um, figure the baseboard, you divide by 600 of that, they gave me 4.7, you round up, you need a five foot section of copper fin tube baseboard for that room. Size of our system using a universal hydraulic formula. Our system design will be based on a 20 degree delta T. Let's say the house, as an example, has six rooms. Each zone controls two rooms. If all the rooms heat values are added together, the final figure is an indication of design heating capacity of the boiler. Room one has a heat loss of 2,982 uh, BTUs. And if we want to figure that baseboard length, you do that math over there, you see that comes to five feet. Room two has 27,108. So if you do that, you do that math, you get the baseboard length. Room three, same process four, five, and your six rooms, and you do your, your math for your baseball length. Your total loss of 90,000 BTUs heat load for the house. Next, we have to figure the flow rate for the job and each of the zones, procedure. GPMs equals BTUs divided by 500 times delta T. GPMs equals 90,000 divided by 500 times delta T. I mean times the 20 is the delta T. And we get 90 divided by 10, give us the flow rate for the job of 9.0 gallons per minute, like I showed you on that pump performance curve. And you got the, uh, the flow rate for the zones, 30,000 divided by 10,000, give us the flow rate for each of the zones of 3.0 GPMs. Uh, Next, we have to figure the head of feet for the job procedure. For this system, let's say it's uh, 150 feet. Uh, 150 times 1.5 equals 20, 225 times 0.04 equals 9 feet of head. Circular selection for the job, we know the need is a 9 gallons per minute at a, a feet head of, of to deliver 90,000 BTUs. Uh, you can pinpoint the head and flow requirements for the circular on the pump performance curve graph. Reminder notes, use the hydraulic formula, you can calculate the flow temperature difference or load, G 
your GPM will flow equals BTU divided by 500 times delta T. Uh, 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 the temperature difference or delta T equals BTU divided by 500 times the GPMs. And the load or BTU equals 500 times delta T times GPMs. All right, here's an example of our six room house. We're going to check it out. GPMs, we had 90,000. BTUs, we used the formula 500 times 20 gave us a nine gallons per minute. That's our flow rate. We have a delta T, we have 90,000 BTUs divided by 500 times nine, and that gave us a delta T of 20 degrees. And then we had the 500 times the 20 times the nine, it gave us a 90,000 BTUs. Here's the drawing to show you the longest loop methods. I calculate the math there for you, show you the zones, show you the pipe sizing, and you can see the longest loop is in red, the two shorter ones in green. Thank you for viewing this presentation by Ozai Moore.